put these on for I can see. Good evening, everyone. I got y'all. That's for your daddy. That's, that's for Timmy. I got all y'all on that one there. So. <laughs> Let's open in prayer. Dear Lord, we, uh, we come to you today with heavy hearts, but we also come to you with a celebration. We know that Timmy will be missed, but we also know that Timmy is not suffering no more. We know he's not hurting. We know he has a new body. He is brand new. So Lord, we, we take comfort in that. But Lord, we ask you for comfort for us. As we grieve, as we tell stories, as we laugh, as we cry, we're all going to have our moments. Lord, we just ask that you be with each and every one of us. Comfort us during this time. Comfort us during the good times as we're laughing and telling stories of Timmy and the bad times when we're grieving and missing Timmy. We know you're here with us. We thank you for that. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I am free. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work or play. Task undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of the day. I'm parting if parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy, a friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your hearts and share me. Share with me. God wants me now. He set me free. Thank you, Monica. You did a good job. You got through that. I first want to thank the family for allowing me to uh, speak um, and over Timmy's service. Um, it's an honor. Timmy was my brother. He just wasn't a friend. Uh, we've been through a lot together for the last 40 years. And um, so I just want to say thank you all for allowing me to stand up here and be able to speak. Timmy Ray Risen, <clears throat> a man known for his infectious laughter, adventurous spirit, passed away August 25th, 2024, in Lexington, Kentucky, just two days shy of his 61st birthday. Born on August 27th, 1963, in Paris, Kentucky, Timothy, or Tim, as he was affectionately called by his friends and family, lived a life of full of passion, joy, and a love of sports. Timmy graduated from high school in 1981 and was an avid bowler with numerous 300s, 300 games, and 800 series in his name. When Bourbon Bowl got turned down here in Lexington, Timmy had the highest series in that house at 807. His competitive edge was also evident on the softball field where he was recognized an exceptional good player 
and on the golf course where he enjoyed many summer afternoons. Professionally, Timmy was the proud owner of BGT Trucking and Central Sealing. His hard work and dedication to his business were only matched by his commitment to his family and friends. He was a self-made man, valued the relationships he built both within and outside his industries. Timmy was a devoted fan of the University of Kentucky basketball and football teams. Timmy never missed a game cheering on his beloved Wildcats with the same favor he brought to every aspect of his life. He loved his sports and extended to baseball where he was a diehard Red Sox fan. And that's up for discussion because on Saturday, as bad as he was still feeling, me and Earl and Monica was having an argument with him because he was telling us he wasn't no Yankees fan. But if you watch these videos, you will see him in both hats. Red Sox, if they were the good team at that time, or the Yankees, if they were in a good team. And my pastor said I was bad for having an argument for a man that was passing away. And I said, well, I had to win an argument somehow in my life, so. <laughs> Uh, Timmy's sense of humor was one of his most defining characteristics. He had the ability to light up any room with his jokes and funny anecdotes, leaving a trail of smiles wherever he went. His friendly demeanor made him a beloved figure in his community, and his adventurous nature inspired many to join him on his escapades. Family <clears throat> was the cornerstone of Timmy's world. He leaves behind a loving and extensive family including his three children, Bradley K. Smith, ex-wife Alina, Amy K., and Kevin Ramey Smith, and Caitlin D. Risen. His legacy continues through his cherished grandchildren, Emma, Jacob, Chloe, Bordrick uh, Smith, and Ashley Johnson, who will miss their grandfather's playful spirit and boundless energy. Timmy was loved, beloved, brother to Donna and Mike Begley, Holman, Ann Risen, James Earl, and Cassandra Risen, Mike Risen, and Monica and Mike Dickerson. He lived, his life was enriched by the presence of his many nephews, nieces, and cousins who will fondly remember his guidance and the fun times they shared. His ex-wife, Anita Stith, also survives him and Together, they navigated the complications of uh, complexities of life with grace and mutual respect. He is preceded in death by his parents, Henry and Dolly Frederick, and his brother, William Billy Risen. Tim departs, departure leaves a void in our hearts of those who knew him, but his memory will celebrate and keep alive through the stories and laughter he left behind. He was well-loved, full of achievements, love, and unwavering zest for life that will continue to inspire his friends and family. As we bid farewell to Timmy Ray Rising, we remember a man who was not just funny and friendly, but truly adventurous in every sense of the word. His spirit will remain a guiding light to all who had the pleasure of knowing him. Tim's life was a testament to the joy that can be found in every day his legacy will encourage us to pursue our passions with the same wholehearted enthusiasm as he exemplified. How do I say goodbye to The good time that made us laugh I'm waiting back I thought we'd get to see forever But forever is gone now hey, It's so to yesterday I don't know where to 
passage I'm going to talk today comes from John 14 verses 1 through 4. But before I get into that, I just want to tell you a story from Saturday. And it'll lead right into this and how Timmy felt and what Timmy believed. So I went that morning to see Timmy at the hospital and we had a good visit <clears throat> you know at that time his pain was kind of controlled he was doing you know and he told me then that you know he was going to fight he was you know everything was going okay and he was going to fight for his kids and his grandkids and um, I told him I was good and I spent some time with him and um me and Anita and Kim, we prayed with him that morning. And I left. And I don't know what time it was, 3 or 4 o'clock that afternoon, I got the call from uh, Monica, and she said that Timmy had decided to uh, stop treatment. Uh, he was tired, and he was hurting too much. I said, okay. She said, can you come back to the hospital? Absolutely. So I went back to the hospital. Saw them out in the waiting room a little bit, and I said, hey, I'm going to walk back here. So I walked back, and I walked in, and nobody else was in the room. It was just me and Timmy, and he rode over, and he saw me, and he raised his hand up. I grabbed his hand, and he said, I can't no more. He said, I will see you on the other side. I love you. And I said, I love you too, brother. So we talked a little bit back and forth there. And um, at that time, we was in limbo because we was waiting on the doctors to sign off on hospice. Then hospice had to come in and explain everything. So we was kind of in limbo there. And visitors came in and out. And uh, hospice finally came in turned his dialysis machine off, which he had been on. It was running 24-hour dialysis on him. Turned everything off and gave him his first really, really good shot of pain medicine that you could see that absolutely took his pain away. You could see right then he was coherent. He was still talking. You know, he would fall asleep, but if you woke him and talked to him, he was still talking to us. And so we all... It was all 
in and out, in and out. Everybody, you know, go for a minute, come back in, whatever. We was all visiting. We was, I was there probably another, I'm going to guess, three to four hours, something like that. So I knew it was time that I need to go and see him. So I walked back in, and it was me and him again, and go back to when me and him first met and was really friends and stuff. We went to a little church right up the road here behind Hardy's called First Church of God. And we was in the youth group together. And I remember at that time, Timmy asked him then for God to come into his life. Fast forward till Saturday. So Saturday, I'm in there, I'm holding his hand. And um, I said, Timmy, he turned it over and he looked at me, eyes open, and I said, uh, hey, let's have a talk. And he said, okay. I said, do you still today believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and died on the cross for your sins? He said, yes, I do. And I said, do you want to ask God to forgive you of your sins? And he said, yes. And me and him together went through the sinner's prayer. He's crying. I'm crying. We said it. I prayed over top of him. I sat there for a little bit. And then I looked at him. He looked at me. And he said, again, he told me again, I'll see you on the other side. I reached up and I rubbed his head. And I said, I love you, brother. And he said, I love you, too. And I walked out of the room with two things. One, with tremendous grief. And the other, a peace, knowing where Timmy was going to be. And reason I bring that up is because the passage I'm preaching on is talking about heaven. And Timmy knew heaven. He knew where he was going to go. He knew God. In John 14, 1, 4, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so... Would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. I know we all have used the word in heaven in different ways, but have we really thought about heaven? Today, let me share some comfort about heaven. Because that's where Timmy is. That's where he told me he'll see me again. He'll see me on the other side. Heaven's real. In the passage, it tells us he is going to prepare a place for us. He tells us his father's house has many rooms. He tells us he will return to take us there. See, heaven's for real as a house that you live in today. But the difference from heaven in the house you live in today, heaven is forever. Heaven is eternity. Heaven is the place we all long for. Here on earth, we are just passing through. It's short. It's temporary. Jesus tells us that we know the pl way to the place he is going. What is that way? The way through Jesus Christ. Finding God as your Savior. Turning your life over to God saying, You are the way, the light I will follow. Timmy asked that back when we was teenagers. He reconfirmed it again with me on Saturday. He knew the way to God. He knew the way to heaven. And he reconfirmed that with me on Saturday when he told me he would see me on the other side. He knew before me and him even prayed that afternoon, later that afternoon. He knew. 
where he was going. Heaven's a holy place. Re- Revelation 21.4 God shall wipe all of our tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more deaths, nor sorrow, nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. Timmy is in no more pain. He has a new body. He's not suffering like many of us saw him in the hospital. Heaven is a reunion. I can only imagine the reunion that Timmy had with his mom and Henry and Billy up there. I can only imagine. I can only imagine the celebration yesterday on his 61st birthday. It's a reunion. The ones who have gone before us, the ones that we want to see again. You know, I hope I have plenty of time here on earth left with my wife and my child and my new grandbaby. But I know it's going to reunion the day that I see my mother in heaven. I know that. It's going to be a glorious day. And Monica, I'm sorry, but, you know, with all these pictures, you're always having to be in these pictures and show yourself off. And Timmy beat you on this one. He got the dolly in your dad before uh, you did. So, you know, Timmy got you on this one. So he, uh, he, he upped you. you. The picture is no more. He upped you on this one. So you're not the favorite no more. You're out. <laughs> you're out. You're not the favorite no more. And heaven's a journey. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to my Father except through me. This is not a one-time ticket to heaven. It requires work. It requires you to say, I said before, I am yours. I turn everything over to you. I will do your will on earth. I will follow you. You are my light. I want to see my loved ones again. I want to see Timmy, and I know Timmy wants to see each and every one of you all. So, hold on, i got to find this from Earl today. So, after I read this poem that Earl sent me, if anybody would like to speak, I do have one story that I'm going to tell, but if anybody else would like to come up and speak, tell a story, Please come to the mic because they are uh, taping this. So if people that's not able to come today, they can go back on YouTube and watch it. So if you would like to speak, there's an open mic so you can come up and tell a story or whatever you want. When tomorrow starts without me. When tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by my hand. The angel said my place was ready in heaven far above and that I have to leave behind all those I dearly love. But when I walked through the heaven's gate, I felt so much at home. For God looked down, smiled at me, and told me, welcome home. So when tomorrow starts without me, don't think we're apart. For every time you think of me, I'm right there in your heart. I have two. The first one I'm going to tell, this poem, there's going to be times that you're going to think of Timmy. Something's going to show up. Something's going to remind you that, hey, I'm okay. So two years ago, almost three, Timmy wasn't able to bow with me and Tony anymore on the league we bowed in because of his dialysis and stuff and his weakness. Those last years, we bowled in Richmond. On Mondays, when I got in the car and drove to Richmond, was mine and Timmy's night. I would call him every Monday night, and we'd have a discussion. 
and we talk about everything under the sun. Family, his work, his health, my health, because he knew what I was battling for the, for the last five years as well. We had that connection every Monday night we talked. And if he didn't feel like talking on Monday, he'd always call me on Tuesday. But almost every Monday night we talked. So Monday of this week, we started bowling back. So I had to make that drive to Richmond. And guess who I didn't get to talk to? So on my way down there, I'm a mess. I'm in tears. I'm blubbering, trying to drive. I'm in the middle lane. This car comes up beside me, gets up to my front bumper, and this is hanging around right there. And I happen to look up and look on the back windshield of his car. And there is the Boston Red Sox socks on the back of his car. I called him Monica immediately. It was on the back of this car. Like, hey, I'm still with you on this ride down here. I'm still here. It just brought a peace and calm over me. So now I have to tell you a funny story. Yeah, Ronnie, you said it. So... Monica had just heard this story at the hospital, and she said, you've got to tell this story on at the funeral. So back in the day, our choice of drink was gin. So one night, me, Timmy, Ronnie Wayne, and Mr. Stanfield back there, all decided we was just going to ride around town and drink. Three-fifths of gin. That's all we're doing, riding around town all night. Drunker and Cooter Brown. So Sleepy over here decided he was passing out. Ronnie, he passes out in the back of the truck. We're in my daddy's truck. And even when he was in the daddy's truck, Timmy always had to drive. Y'all probably know that too. If, if y'all rode somewhere with Timmy always had to drive. So we're in my daddy's truck. Me and Ronnie's in the back. But before we go to sleep, we come down through Main Street. My boy would stand here and stand up in the back of the truck. And he started hollering, a little for your mammy, a little for your pappy, a little more, and we all going to be happy. All night long, that's what we were saying, all night, going back and forth through town. So like I said, my boy passed out, Ronnie did. Ronnie lived out there off 2nd Street in that trailer park, wasn't it, Ronnie? So we're taking him home. We get to his trailer. We back up to the, like this is the front door. There's a step and a mat. We back up to that, let the tailgate down, and row him out. <laughs> My boy sleeps there all night, and his mama comes out and steps on him next morning. <laughs> so then my, my, so I'm left in the back. I'm not passed out. My two friends, I say that literally, Timmy and Marty are in the front. Most of y'all knew my mother. Well, they were scared of Eileen. So I lived on Henderson. So we get in front of the house. Them two open the doors and jump out and run down the street. <laughs> the truck is still moving. They left it in gear. I had to jump out of the back, catch the truck, and then park the truck. Now that's what you call friends, ladies and gentlemen. That's what you call friends. All because they were scared of Eileen. I ain't never seen them two run that fast on base on a softball field. Yeah. I never seen them two run that fast when we play softball together, but they sure did book on down that street. So I had to I had to share that story. So is there any other stories that people would like to share?
Don't be scared if Monica can get up here and talk. Nobody? All right, come on up here. You got to come up to the mic. I remember when we was all younger, we was playing softball together with old Gary Park. And Timmy asked me if he could play shortstop. And I told him, I said, yeah, I don't know else want to play shortstop. Well, he's out there trying to catch the, ba the softballs that are being hit toward him. And he was standing over there and he was... And I told him, I said, man, I said, you going to play shortstop? I said, you act like you're trying to flag down for the state highway. <laughs> And he come up to me when we went in the dugout. He says, I don't think I want to play shortstop. <laughs> I said, well, you better because we don't have nobody else to do it. <laughs> he was my great friend. And I want to miss him. And, you know, there's going to be days I want to break down. But, Lord, he's got us. And Timmy knows. Lord is his Savior. And... All we've got to do is just put put our trust in the Lord, and He'll ease our pain. He'll take care of us. Yes. Good to see everybody again. Good old duck back there. Mm -hmm. I see ducks. <laughs> Pain changed better. That's right. God bless everybody. Anybody else? Monica, you ain't got no stories you want to tell? <laughs> All right, let's pray. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for your reassurance. As I read, you have many rooms for us. And we take comfort in that. We take comfort that there is an eternal life. We take comfort that we will see our loved ones again. We take comfort in knowing when we're grieving, when we're sad, you are there with us. So Lord, as we <clears throat> depart here tonight, as we say our final goodbyes, just be with us, Lord. Be with each and every one of us. Hold our hand, give us peace, give us comfort. We know Timmy is not hurting. We know he's in no more pain. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this family, this big family, the loving family. I'm thankful that on Saturday that he told each and every one that he loved them. And each and every one got to tell him that they loved him. So, Lord, be with us. Bless us throughout the week, throughout the months. And be with us, Lord. We never fail to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
Anita wanted me to announce that there's food at her house if anybody would like to come over afterwards. <laughs> 